All right, guys, so I think the recording has started now, right? OK, turn your mic off, baby girl. All right, so I started the recording late. We missed the discussion part about the biotic versus abiotic. OK, biotic is the living parts of the organisms or have ever once ever been alive, even like eggshells and and poo. That is still organic matter. That is still biotic. Abiotic was not alive and never was alive. That's like oxygen, carbon dioxide, heat, water, um, calcium and phosphorus, the nutrients we need. All of those are abiotic. Biotic is living or once living. Abiotic has never been alive. The five parts of an ecosystem are right here. The five basic parts of an ecosystem, energy, mineral nutrients, water, oxygen, living organisms. Those are a great listing question for a test. The five basic parts of an ecosystem, energy, mineral nutrients, water, oxygen, living organisms. Now we're ready to start the part about the levels of organization. All right, how do we organize the things we want to study in science? You can have from the very basic smallest atoms and even parts of an atom. Remember electrons, protons and neutrons, the atoms, and you can build those up into compounds and molecules and eventually into a cell. And then remember when you learned in biology or you learned in uh, science classes when you were younger, um, you have a cell and then organs and then tissues and organ systems like the digestive system and then the whole organism. That's a whole being now. Ecology is only going to deal with once we get big enough to be a whole organism. We're going to start there and move upward. We're going to go from organism to population to community ecosystem and biome and biosphere. I'll tell you about those in just a second. But after biosphere, biosphere is the whole Earth. Scientists can keep on studying. You know that they can. They'll study from the Earth up to the whole solar system, to our whole galaxy, to the whole universe, into out multiverses, okay? So can you imagine studying science from the tiniest little atom all the way out to the multiverse, okay? As big and as small as that goes, and it can be done. Those are levels of organization. We work basically in the middle, okay? We start with a single organism, like right here. This is, see my picture? This is like um, a single wildebeest. Let's say his name is Bob. Okay, this is Bob the wildebeest. That's one organism. All right, now population is the next level up. This is Bob and his cousins and uncles and mom and dad and all the other wildebeest who live in the general area with him. All right, that's population. The next level up is community. Do you see how we're getting bigger as we go? The next level up is community. All right, and that is every living thing who lives nearby Bob, the rhinos, the lions, the grass and the trees, the living things and the mosquitoes and bugs. OK, the living things are part of the community. Now, if we're going to add in the non living things like the heat on the savanna, the dirt and the um, the the watering hole and the giant rock where they hold the new baby lions up to to introduce the lions and lion pride, the big rocks, the watering hole and the, the heat. All right, that brings us up to ecosystem. The next level up here that is not not shown in our picture is that's the biome and that's where you have every savanna on the whole world. That's the biome and then the biosphere is the whole world. So if you want, we we have a way to keep these straight. So we have a single organism starting at the bottom, a single organism. All of that same organism with his uncles and brothers and cousins and, and aunts, that same organism makes a population. Community is all of the living things, plant, animal and bugs in that area. Then ecosystem, we add in the non living parts like the water and the rocks and the heat. OK, that's the non living. Then that's called ecosystem. There's a break in here that's not in the picture called biomes. That's where we list all of the savannas around the world. OK, or if we were doing, you know, all of the tundra around the world, all of the taiga around the world, all of the rainforest around the world, whatever we're doing. OK, this particular one happens to be savanna. So biome is the next level and then biosphere is the whole earth everywhere that life can exist. So we have this cute little saying right here to get you from the biggest down to the smallest. Bebek po. You looking at it, guys. Bebek po. Can I hear you say that once or twice? Turn on your mic, guys. Bebek po. Can I hear you say it? Bebekpo. 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 You see the word here? 
Okay, Bebek Po. Uh-huh. Bebek Po. Bebek Po. Bebek Po. Yeah, it's a funny word, but it will help you keep them in order. Okay, look, the biggest one of all is the biosphere. That's the whole earth. The next level down is the biome. Okay, in the picture we were looking above, it was the savannas, but it could be, I mean, every savanna in the whole world, that's what we're talking about. And then, or it could be all of the rainforest in the whole world. It could be all of the deserts in the whole world. Whatever you're talking about, it's all of them everywhere on the world. So the bi biosphere is the whole world. Biome is that ecosystem anywhere you find it. Then ecosystem is just this specific little one. Say this guy is in like North Central Africa. That's where he's at. OK, he, he, we're not, that's his ecosystem. Just that one right there in North Central Africa. There are savannas everywhere around the world. That's the biome. His ecosystem is just the living and non-living parts around where he lives. And then the next one down is community. That's just the living things. OK, <coughs> but all of the living things, but but just living. And then we go down to population and then a single organism. So this goes the Beck Po helps you get them in order from biggest down to smallest. And here are their definitions again for you if you need them. All right, now this part here, this next part of the notes is um, city mouse and country mouse. This is to help us show the difference between a population and a species. We just did population, right? Take a look at what we're talking about with Bob the wildebeest. Population is is all of the all of the the wildebeest that live nearby him, his uncles, brothers, cousins, sisters, aunts, okay? All of the wildebeest that live nearby him, that's part of the population. But if I said every wildebeest in the whole world, then I'm talking about species, okay? They're very similar words, okay? Species is that particular animal anywhere in the world. Population is that particular animal who lives nearby each other. So we're talking about city mouse and country mouse. We could have a field mouse that lives in Iowa and a field mouse that lives in New York. That's why I've got city mouse and country mouse up there. A city mouse, that, uh, a country mouse that lives in Iowa and a city mouse that lives in New York. They are part of the same species. Okay, they are both field mice. And if you put them together, they could mate and have babies. That's the one way you check to make sure that something is a species is when you put them together, can they mate and have babies? Well, yeah, they could, except they never would. They are the same species, but they're different populations because this one here in Iowa would never come across this one here in New York, not on any regular type of an ordin of a situation. So populations are that species nearby each other. Population is just within the same general area. Population is close to each other. Species means anywhere around the world. A group of that same organism anywhere around the world. And usually the way we tell that they're the same species is right here, the, the potential potentially mate and produce offspring. All right, the last part of our notes for today. Um, can somebody here on the, the, the microphone, does anybody want to try to tell me, can you put in your own words how a population and a species is different? Think about the idea of country mouse and city mouse if it helps you. How can you tell me on the mic how populations and species are different? Which one can be anywhere in the world? That particular organism anywhere in the world. Is that species or population? Population. Hmm. Species is anywhere. Population means they live nearby each other. Okay. Think about the population of, of Memphis, right? That's how many Memphians live nearby each other. OK, so when we we talk about um, animals, it's a population if they're living nearby each other. But species can happen anywhere around the world as long as when you do put them together, they can mate. The last one today is habitats. OK, habitats. Habitat is the place where an organism lives and every 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 different habitat has specific characteristics that perfectly match the organisms that live there and need to survive there. The organisms are very well suited to their habitats. And, um, and if something happened to the habitat, the species would have trouble. Habitat is where they live. Let's take a look at these pictures of habitats. These are all different types of habitats that different animals could live in. You got the desert, the oceans, savannas. You even have houses and farms, okay? And uh, forests and 
and polar ice caps. You have all these different possibilities of habitats so that all the different species of animals have places to live. A habitat is the place where that organism lives and every habitat has a specific set of characteristics that that organism needs to live there. So the organisms are very well suited to their habitat. In fact, most animals and plants, if you pull them out of their habitat, they're not going to survive very well for long periods of time. OK, so take a look at this poor koala bear. You take them out of their habitat and they're not going to be able to survive really well. So the habitat has is the place where the organism lives and it has all the um, the special characteristics that that animal needs to live. All right. You guys, uh, does that make sense to you guys? Mm -hmm. All right, does anybody have any questions for today? All right, I'm going to flip my mic up and I'm going to let you guys make sure that your notes are finished. And if you'd like to, let me see what we have today. I can't remember what we have going on. Um, let me uh, stop the camera too. We're done with the video for today. Um, let's see. Stop recording.